Welcome back to Unraveling the Pattern. I'm Lauren. Amazon Prime surprised us at San Diego Comic-Con with an amazingly detailed behind the scenes teaser for season two. There's a ton to get into, so real quick, spoiler warning. This video will contain speculation, theories, and a lot of details related to all of the Wheel of Time books. So to be safe, if you haven't read the full Wheel of Time book series, I'd highly recommend that you don't watch this video. There will also obviously be spoilers for seasons one and two of the Wheel of Time show on Amazon Prime. Okay, let's get right into it. Here's the teaser. This teaser has 37 shots, 36 if you remove the title screen at the end. I'll jump around a bit, but let's just start with the first shot and go from there. There's really not much to say about this first one. It probably takes place in the same location as this next shot, where we get a closer look at the Maidens of the Spear. And this looks to me to be Ayula Smart, who was confirmed by Amazon to be Avienda in Season 2. I'm noticing no spears here, which is interesting. Does it look to you like Avienda, or whoever this is, has blood on her leg? Could this injury be related to the scene we see later of her fighting the White Cloak? I'll talk more about that in a minute. Bane and Chiad on Twitter pointed out that the Cadensor looks different from how it was presented in the Blood Snow scene from Season 1. I'm wondering if they perhaps modified it or if they intentionally made it different because we know that the Aiel do change their Cadensor to some degree when they're in different environments. The Aiel are also able to distinguish subtle differences in Cadensor that Wetlanders usually can't pick up on, depending on the clan, sept, or society of the wearer. Perhaps they're making the Cadensor different for each clan or something. The Blood Snow cold open from Season 1 also took place 20 years earlier, and Rand's mother is pregnant, so perhaps it's different for those reasons as well. Does Aiel fashion change? Also, does it look like there's a fog in the distance to you? Keep the fog in mind for later. Not much to say about this, but it looks like Moraine is speaking and Lan is listening. I also noticed that the camera in this shot is on a boat-like thing in the water, so I'm guessing this shot might actually be meant to look like Lan and Moraine are being viewed from the water or possibly even from a boat. Could Moraine and Lan actually be meeting somebody on a boat in this scene? What if they meet Rand as he gets off of Bail Doman's ship? Also, there was a leaked image of a waygate in water. This might not be the same location, as one looks more like a beach by the ocean, and the other is more like a small private beach on or near a lake. But could these locations be part of the same scene? Could Moraine and Land be just arriving from the ways, or heading towards the ways at this moment? This also looks like the same location as this shot. In this shot, you can see their footprints coming from behind them, and the sun seems to be pretty low. If they're in or near Falm, on the west coast of the continent, that would put this later in the day, just before sunset. Do you think we'll get to see the sunset in this beautiful location? I can't wait to see these visuals in the show. There's an image that was posted online of Rosamund Pike wearing what looks like the same blouse that she's wearing in this scene as well. In this shot, we see White Cloaks on horses. The horses' masks clearly match the ones in Season 1. Notice that the White Cloaks themselves are wearing masks. I don't think this is COVID related, as we see another White Cloak with his face covered against dirt and wind later. The White Cloak costumes seem to have changed from Season 1, which I'll discuss more in a bit. Could this rider in the front possibly be Eamon Valda? I'm pretty sure he's not dead yet. Also, check out this trebuchet looking thing. Did you notice in the map shot that was shown later, there are White Cloak trebuchets? This feels more like a White Cloak siege to me than a simple battle outside of the walls. I'm guessing they don't fully understand just how poorly their siege will work against the Shan Chan. Good thing there's more fog here too, which means I'm guessing there will be help from Heroes of the Horn. Well, I hope. Speaking of the map, this is definitely Falma on the map, right? We know that Falma is at the very tip of Toman Head, a large peninsula that juts out of the western coast of the continent. 
I'm guessing this map just represents a close up of that area. And I'm guessing this is the same fog that we see in the scenes with the White Cloaks and with the Aiel. There's fog in this scene as well. I'll point out fog in other scenes as we go along. This shot doesn't reveal much, but there's someone here wearing what looks like a red dress and what appears to be a strange thing on their head. Also, these camels remind me of the merchant looking people we saw on horses in the previous behind the scenes teaser for season two, where we might also be seeing Pat and Fane in the background, though I'm not sure if this is the same location or scene at all. We've seen this wheel with the shackles before in another teaser. Check out my other video about that teaser where I break this down in greater detail. However, notice the angle that the camera is placed in here. This scene looks to me like it will be an over the shoulder style shot from just behind the person who's shackled to the wheel. I also have a theory about this that I'll explain at the end of the video. My gut reaction to this shot was that this was an Aiel wearing their shufa, but clearly this is a white cloak. He has an axe, and you can see the familiar shoulder armor or pauldron on the sunburst logo on the chest. He also appears to have the golden knots denoting his rank here. I've seen many theories about who this could be. Jaikim Karadine, Bayar, or possibly Dane Bornhold. Whoever it is, his hair is fabulous. Does it remind you of anything? Also, I love that this was released in 4K because you can see a ton of beautiful detail in the cloth and leatherwork in the costumes. I think they've slightly modified the White Cloak costumes for season two to look a little bit more ornate or higher quality. The details on the pauldron are particularly awesome to me. We'll see more of this later in another shot. Also, I'm guessing this takes place in the same location as this shot from earlier because of the masks, as if they're blocking out wind or dirt. Finally, notice this White Cloak's axe. Now let's skip forward to this shot. Now I'm not saying this is the same guy or even the same weapon. You can see a major difference in the hair color and there's a different looking pauldron on this White Cloak's arm, but the axe does look similar. I'm pretty sure this is Ayula Smart as Avienda, or her stunt double at least, in this scene. Look at her hair. I wouldn't be surprised if Perrin is somehow involved in this scene and either helps Avienda fight or escape from something, or meets her at some point during all of this. Do you see what looks like a cage or something here in the background? This feels very similar to the scene with Perrin and Gaul in the cage from book three. And thanks to our friends at WattSeries.com, we know that there was a leaked audition script that may or may not be final dialogue from the show, but it heavily implies that Avienda and Perrin meet after Perrin saves her life and she tells him that she owes him a blood debt. Sounds like they might be introducing her in place of Gaul early on. Now I'm not saying we'll see Gaul in the show or that he's been cut, but just to put you at ease, Rafe Judkins did say that the dead Aeolman in the cage from season one is not Gaul. It's possible that they'll introduce Gaul later in the show, or it is possible that he'll be cut entirely. What do you think? How will this connection between Perrin and Avienda change both of their stories down the line? Back to this shot. Could this be the first White Cloak that Perrin kills? Could this be where Perrin gets his axe? It could be really interesting if Perrin takes the axe of the first person he kills. Going back to the previous White Cloak, could this White Cloak be Bayar or Dane Bornhold and he has Perrin's axe at this point? Or is it more likely that this is just another axe? Did you notice in some of these other shots with Perrin that he appears to have a sword? What if he gets his axe from Bayar or Dane Bornhold or another White Cloak at some point? Does it make sense for Perrin's character to have him keep an axe of a person he kills? Or do you think he'll make the axe in a forge at some point in the show? I'd love to see a scene of Perrin in a forge. This looks like Perrin and the Shinaran soldiers. I already mentioned that Perrin seems to have a sword. I also notice fog in the background of this scene, though it seems to be much greener than the shots we get of Falm, so it's unclear to me if this is part of that same sequence or not. Also, this definitely looks like Uno here, which is interesting considering he appeared to get stabbed by Pat and Fane with the Shatter Logoth dagger in the finale in season one. Rafe was asked about this in a Q&A he did, and he mentioned that Uno was definitely still breathing in the finale, so we still have yet to learn why or how Pat and Fane's dagger didn't kill Loyal or Uno in the finale. Speaking of Loyal, he's visible a couple times in this teaser, but I'll get to that in a minute. This next shot shows a more overgrown waygate in a tropical looking place. Geeky Airy from WattSeries.com pointed out to me that this was likely shot at this location called Fint Oasis in Morocco. You should definitely follow Geeky Airy here on YouTube and on Twitter and WattSeries.com for some amazing behind the scenes news, casting, and leaks. I like that this waygate is more overgrown and doesn't look to be in the open like the waygates in season one. I created a whole video comparing the lore of the waygates and how they were similar and different in the books versus the show. I hope they course correct a bit with the waygates in season two. Do you think this is the same location as the previous shot with Perrin and the Shinarans? This shot is really cool to me. I love the camera movement, but like most of the shots in this teaser, this is just behind the scenes footage and isn't probably an actual shot from the show. You can see the camera down in the bottom left. 
I wonder how many of these teaser shots are just behind the scenes crew shots and how many are actual shots from the show, if any. Anyway, I'm pretty sure that these are Shan Chan banners and symbols. The Shan Chan symbol is a golden hawk in flight, clutching three lightning bolts in each claw. I can't be certain that this symbol shows that, but it seems close. As already mentioned, it looks like there's fog outside of the gates here, so I'm guessing this is Falma, and this guy in the middle is probably High Lord Turok. The armor that these soldiers are wearing definitely matches the Shan Chan armor that we've seen in other shots, as well as the Shan Chan armor from the season 1 finale. But who do you think this person is? It looks to me like it's a woman with something on her head, possibly even a braid? Could this be a servant of Turak? Could it be Egyanin? Possibly Suroth? I thought it could be a Damani or Suldam, but usually they're in pairs, so I'm guessing it's a servant or someone else. I also want to point out the overturned tables and messy cooking fires and everything surrounding this area. It even looks like weapons were grabbed in a hurry from these racks. It seems to me like there were people here, probably soldiers, and that they rushed away to fight. I don't think that the Shan Chan would normally have a camp this disorganized. Finally, who do you think this is in the front? I wonder if this is a member of the film crew, or could it possibly be Bail Doma? We get a few scenes that look like they take place in this area, including two shots of this explosion or fireball, this shot of Rand walking, and possibly this shot that we've already talked about. Do you think this is the same area or village where Perrin meets Avienda? Once again, Geeky Airy did a phenomenal breakdown of all of the known filming locations for Season 2 on her YouTube channel, and she has a lot of really interesting images of this set and location. I'm not going to show all of the leaked images here, but I highly recommend that you go and watch her video. Please like her videos and subscribe to her channel too. Here's one image that I will show that she managed to pull from Google Earth, which shows the basic layout of this set. This is a smaller looking town outside of the walls of a larger, fancier looking area. If this isn't the foregate just outside of Kyrian, I don't know what it is. I'm guessing this fire is likely something that happens either as a distraction or during a fight with Trollocs, though it could also be related to the inn where Rand is staying being burned by Dark Friends or Trollocs. Remember the scene in The Great Hunt where Rand fights Trollocs that are hiding in broad daylight, pretending to be large puppets from a sort of street show? Well, Geeky Airy even shows images of straw puppet monsters that were taken at this location. I'll let you discover those for yourself by watching her video. Link is in the description. Description. Also, around the time when Rand is changing his clothing and getting deep into the game of houses, there's a fire at the inn where he's staying. Here's an image of an inn just inside the gates of the city. Could this be where Rand is staying? I think this is very possibly all related to this next shot of Rand with the torch. A few things to know about this scene. I don't think this is fog this time, but smoke. Possibly smoke from the same fire that comes from the explosion in the previous shots. It's clear that Lan and probably Moraine are behind Rand. Do you think they'll stay with Rand the whole time in season two? Or do you think they'll meet up with him later? I have more to say about that in a minute. There's a fourth person that's hard to see, but I'm guessing this is either an extra or just a random soldier or something. Do you think this is someone important? The Dusty Wheel pointed out some interesting details on Twitter about this scene. The building to the side looks like it could be the set of the inn from Geeky Ares video. He also noticed with some enhancements and contrast in the image that Rand's clothes look more fancy here than they do in some of the other shots. I think there might even be dragons or herons on his clothing. Does this mean we'll get to see Rand change from simple sheep herder to reluctant lord, possibly with Moraine's help or influence? It makes a lot of sense to me that Moraine would be the one who's giving Rand more fancy clothing and who's teaching him about the game of houses in Kyrian, instead of Huron and Loyal like in The Great Hunt. I'm sure there's way more to speculate just related to Rand's different appearances in the teaser and how his character will grow throughout the season. But I do love that in this shot, Rand is the one leading the way, not Moraine or Lan. I hope that in general, the show will pivot from Moraine being the main character to Rand, Matt, Perrin, Egwene, and Nynaeve. I'm looking forward to seeing how they handle this. There have been some fun memes created based on this scene of Rand with the torch that I thought you should see. This one was from Omar at WattSeries.com. And this one is from Mostly Bree on Twitter. We get a very quick glimpse of Min in a dark room with light coming in from a window behind her. I don't have any clue where this is, but I like her hair in this shot when it's brightened up a bit. Could her partially shaved head mean that perhaps she's working as a servant or even a truth speaker for the Shan Chan? Or did she just get a new haircut? Where do you think Min will fit into all of this? Do you think this is in Falma? Could she be hiding with Elaine and Nynaeve in this scene? It does seem like she's hiding behind a door, looking outside at something. Perhaps there are Suldam or Damani just outside of this room. I already mentioned that I think this shot is part of the foregate in Kyrian, but I also want to point out that Rand's head appears to be shaved in all of these shots in this teaser. I wonder if we'll actually see him shave, 
or if the season will jump ahead in time and he'll have less hair. I also love the look of the threads or weaves in Rand's coat in this scene. This design and the color are reminiscent of Egwene's skirt in season one. It's nice to see Rand wearing different clothes and not just the same blue shirt for the entire season. Our boy is really moving up in the world. We get another shot of someone's back. Who do you think this is? The sun looking thing on the doorway behind this person makes me think of Kyrian again. Could this be Lord Barthanis's manor garden perhaps? Do you think this is Lord Barthanis? I'm personally hoping that this is Varen. I'm holding out hope that the mysterious woman at the table read in the previous teaser is Varen. Somebody online figured out that this woman with the white hair is Rima Tewiata, a New Zealander actress. I loved her in Taika Waititi's Hunt for the Wilder People. And she was even seen in Prague back in December of 2021 with an owl, which makes me even more hopeful that she's Varen. I've also heard speculation that this could be Amis, the Aiel Wise One, or another Aes Sedai. Who do you think this is? In this brief glimpse of Pat and Fane, we see a hallway with some unique pillars. I originally thought that this might be a shot from the fortress in Faldara, but the pillars and stonework don't match. I skimmed through season one, but couldn't find any matching architecture, so I'm guessing this is a new location. My hope is that this is the palace where we see the famous Dark Friends social scene that's the prologue of the Great Hunt. It makes sense to me that Pet and Fane would be there since he isn't locked in a jail cell in this version of the story. Will we get a glimpse of Ishamael's palace in the Blight? Here's a quick glimpse of what is likely a Murdral or Fade. Do you think this stone has any significance? We see this same location with the stone and Fade later for just a few frames. It looks like the Fade's scaring someone off of their horse. Could this be Aldib, Moraine's horse? If so, that would likely make this Moraine. Adding a bit of contrast and brightness does make it seem like this person could be wearing blue and might have long hair, but it's pretty blurry and hard to be sure. Perhaps this scene is a replacement for the Drakkar attack scene in The Great Hunt. This shot is also really cool, but I am at a loss for what it could be. It's possible that this is a scene of Damani in training, maybe? Could this be Egwene here? I think this person in the middle could just be a stand-in or a member of the crew. Their jacket looks to me like something modern and doesn't fit in with the costumes of the others. I'm guessing this set will be added onto the top of a larger tower or will be enhanced a lot with CGI. You can even see some green screen panels being hauled in here on this side, so it's possible the entire background will change too for the final shot. Surprise, surprise, Geeky Airy talks more about this location in her season two video too. I'm serious, go and subscribe to her YouTube channel now. It's okay, I'll wait. There's a lot to unpack in this shot. First, we've got fog. Next, we see different versions of white cloak armor with different pauldrons and, in some cases, no white cloaks. Unless these soldiers aren't children of the light. I'm guessing that they are white cloak soldiers though, because their pauldrons seem to match this white cloak's pauldron. But just like the guy in this shot with Avienda, there's no shoulder piece that seems to indicate rank, like this guy has here. Also, do you think this white-haired, bearded white cloak is Jeffrem Bornhold? It sure looks like him to me, and he does have the added shoulder piece. I'm pretty sure that these are Shan Chan's soldiers. Their golden helms and armor feel reminiscent of what we've seen in other other shots. At first I was confused by this helmet that this guy was wearing, but then I realized this was the cameraman, so maybe it's for safety while people are swinging their swords around or something. Obviously based on the camera placement, this is a highly choreographed fight sequence, and I'm sure there will be fast cuts and a lot happening. But because of this behind the scenes shot and the slow motion, I can't help but notice how nobody is really hitting anybody else. It reminds me of this funny gif from Star Wars. I'm sure there's more I'm missing, but to me the most important detail in this scene is that we see Loyal in the background. Jumping ahead for a minute to the final shot in the teaser, we get another very quick glimpse of Loyal, and I think Perrin's in the background here too. What do you think this guy in the yellow fedora did to be attacked like this? Seriously though, do you think this is Turek, possibly fighting a certain young man in a Blademaster duel? This shot is very quick and blurry, so it's hard to tell, but I think this is for sure a Shan Chan fighter with a curved blade. I love this next shot of Egwene in the White Tower. She appears to be wearing novice white, and it just gets me so excited for her full character arc throughout the show. Also, did you notice that her hair is unbraided? I wonder if this dish in her bag is related to her constantly having to do dishes as punishment. We've seen a similar looking rug and set from the previous behind the scenes teaser, where we see Nynaeve possibly preparing to walk into this room. Do you think that Nynaeve will talk with Egwene about her braid? Man, there are just so many great shots. This appears to be in the White Tower, probably in the warder training area. I'm convinced that this is our first look at Matt, played by Donal Finn, and he's practicing with a spear or quarterstaff. Does this mean we're getting that amazing scene between Matt, Gawain, and Galad? I really hope so. Rafe did say something about this scene in his Q&A on Twitter. He said that they are, quote, building to a believable version of it in the show. So I'm guessing rather than having Matt and his quarterstaff defeat Gawain and Galad with swords, instead perhaps they'll all be fighting with quarterstaffs. What do you think? Are you as excited as I am to get this scene? Okay. 
This is the shot that got me the most hyped when I saw it the first time. I'm so glad we get to see this iconic scene of the fade nailed to the door. This is definitely Perrin here, and I'm guessing this is Ingtar pointing his sword at the fade. I'm also guessing this is Elias on the left here. You can see that his clothing is made up of animal skins. I think it's very likely that Elias will take the place of Hurin the Sniffer in the show. This gets me excited to learn more about Perrin and his connection with the wolves. My one question is, how did Pat and Fane nail the merger all up that high? Did he have help from Trollocs or did he have to use a stool or a ladder? Could it be possible that he uses Mashadar in some way? I actually hope that they don't show him nailing the fade to the door. I love the way this is revealed in the book as a sort of creepy question mark. Who or what could possibly do this to a fade? Okay, don't tell my wife, but whoa, is it hot in here? Seriously though, imagine him without sleeves in this scene, sitting on a throne in a similar way with certain tattoos on his arms. I can see it. Yosha is perfect as Rand for me so far. Does it look to you like Rand might have blood on his neck and chest? Could this possibly be a scene from book three of him just after he kills some dark friends while going partially insane? I also like the theory that this could be Rand on a boat, possibly Bail Doman's ship. What do you think? Do you think this is Rand's same blue shirt from season one? It looks darker and more worn, which I like. This is such a quick shot, but seeing scenes with Lan and Ran together, and then seeing this gives me hope that we finally will get to see Lan training Rand with the sword. I really hope that we get to actually see Rand training to become a Blade Master. One of my biggest disappointments from season one was that we never got the Rand Lan connection and Lan teaching the boys how to use their weapons. Let's hope that Rand finally gets to learn from Lan. This will also help to further the tension between Lan and Moraine as Lan begins to side with Rand and Nynaeve more and more, which I'm excited to see. I don't know who this is, but it's good to see more horses. I've been worried about the horses since they left them behind at the Waygate in Episode 7. Could this be the return of Bella? The person on the horse looks like they have long, unbraided hair and are possibly wearing white. Perhaps this is the same forest where Moraine is riding in Episode 7 as she makes her way to the Waygate outside of Tarvalon. Or maybe this is Egwene riding to the Waygate with Leandrin, Nynaeve, Elaine, and possibly Min close behind. I love the idea that if Egwene thinks Rand is in danger, she'd be rushing ahead of the others to try to get to the Waygate first. There's not much to go on here. Why do you think Pat and Fane is so mad? I can't wait to get more Pat and Fane in season two. We already talked about this map scene, but it seems pretty clear from this shot that these are Shan Chan ships, and I'm pretty sure these are White Cloaks in the background. So this is probably at a camp or in a tent of one of the White Cloak leaders. There are a few blink and you miss them shots of what appears to be a nighttime battle in fog with Shan Chan and Shinaran soldiers. This is definitely Marcus Rutherford as Perrin here. We get a clear look at the insect-like helmets on the Shan Chan soldiers who are dead. Or maybe they're just sleeping on the ground. I'd take a nap rather than fighting against Shinarans or Heroes of the Horn too. In another quick shot of what seems to be the same scene, we see Perrin being dragged away by someone and what might be a Shan Chan soldier or even maybe a Shan Chan Ogier Gardener soldier pulling on some people. Is this a white cloak? Could this maybe be a scene of them losing a battle until maybe some heroes swoop in to save the day? Can you imagine if Brigitte showed up here? Okay, this is the final shot I want to talk about. Aside from the fade nailed to the door, this is probably the shot that stood out to me the most when I first watched this teaser. And I think this shot has caused the most theorizing online. I'm pretty convinced that this is a Shan Chan outfit of some sort. You can see insect-like mandible details on the costume and headdress, and the gold is definitely in line with the other Shan Chan costumes we've seen so far. The first and most obvious guess is that this is High Lady Suroth. I love the theory that this could also be Suroth at the Dark Friend Social, as her face is partially masked. I also like the idea that because her mouth is uncovered, this could be one of the Shan Chen nobles' voice or truth speakers. Thanks once again to WattSeries.com, we know that a woman called Karima McAdams is likely cast in season two and was seen in certain locations where the show was being filmed, but there hasn't been any official confirmation that she's been cast. However, people on Twitter were quick to do a side-by-side -side comparison of Karima next to this image, and then Geeky Airy took it even one step closer and superimposed Karima's face onto this image. Thanks to her, I'm 100% convinced that this is definitely Karima. That said, I'm not entirely convinced that this is Karima as High Lady Suroth. So I'll end this video with a crazy theory. I think this is Lanfear. Now, I know I'm not the first to come up with the idea, but my wild theory is that this is Lanfear and Semarog, but not Selene. 
One of my Twitter followers, Josh, posted this theory, and I absolutely loved it. A wild theory. It's Lanfear, but not Suroth. It's Suroth's voice. Only her mouth is visible, displaying this as the most important part of the character. So we've already speculated that they will likely remove or consolidate some of the Forsaken in the show. There were eight statues in Episode 5 when Steppen talked about the Forsaken, and there were eight large cracks on the Quendiar seal after Ran supposedly defeated the Dark One in the Season 1 finale. But I think it's more likely that Ran freed the Forsaken in this moment. To be fair, there are 13 total cracks or branches, so perhaps they're still unsure just how many of the Forsaken will be in the show. But I think they will likely remove Semarog from the show as one of the Forsaken and combine some of her character attributes with Lanfear. And as a reminder, full series spoilers. We know that Semarog likes to torture people and cause pain, and at some point she infiltrates the Shan Chan and becomes a very influential person among the Shan Chan nobility. We also saw this shot of someone in white shackled to the wheel, possibly being tortured by this person in black in this odd scene from the previous Season 2 teaser. I've already discussed this shot at length, but if you look closely here, you can see what appears to be a woman wearing some sort of headgear or headdress. There's a dais or throne with a wheel behind her. Once again, thanks to Geeky Airy, there's a much better close-up image of this wheel-shaped throne. Now, who better than Lanfear to give herself a throne and to use the symbol of the Wheel of Time itself, not just as a throne, but as a tool for torture and punishment. The idea of being shackled or trapped by the wheel is the kind of dramatic irony that I think the Forsaken would probably love. It seems like the kind of thing she would do to someone in the dream world. The other part of this theory that I really like is the idea that Lanfear will actually be played by multiple actors. In the books, she does change her appearance often, but I always thought it was a bit silly that when she reveals her true appearance to Ran for the first time, she's just an even prettier version of Selene. I actually like the idea that Lanfear is horribly scarred and ugly, similar to Agenor and Belthamal at the end of the Eye of the World, and that she's pretty much constantly using the Mask of Mirrors to make herself appear more beautiful than is even humanly possible. I think it would be a good idea in the show to keep Lanfear's true identity a bit more mysterious by having her change her face and look entirely different depending on the role that she plays. She could be Karima McAdams as her Shan Chan truth speaker role, but then she could be someone else, like possibly Saleh Saleh as Elsa, or Natasha O'Keefe or someone else as Celine. Also, I didn't point this out before in my previous video, but there is someone else in the shot wearing what appears to be high heels and an almost dominatrix style outfit just off camera here. Could this be another stand-in for this person? Or maybe another actor ready to jump in when this woman, possibly Lanfear, changes her face or reveals a different identity? So that's my theory. This woman is one of Lanfear's identities, possibly a truth speaker, working with the Shan Chan. This version of her character will possibly be merged with Semarog, and she'll be portrayed by someone different as Selene. What do you think? And what did I miss in this amazing teaser? I didn't even get to talk about Rafe's amazing Q&A, or the fact that Season 3 was greenlit by Amazon, or that we're getting a second season of Wheel of Time Origins starting next month in August of 2022. They really hit us hard with some awesome news and teasers. Thanks for watching, and special thanks to my patrons and YouTube supporters. If you like what I do here and want to help support me, even just a little bit, please consider joining my Patreon or supporting me here on YouTube. And special shout out to Anton Brackage on Reddit for giving me this hilarious line that I'm now going to steal and use to end all of my show-related videos. Until next time, let the dragon ride again on the winds of Prime.